Jock Hadkin, this is Kurt Thomas. Hi. And uh, you may not remember me, but <laughs> I'm Mick Strawn. <laughs> I do remember you. You're a very vivid character, a vivid memory in my mind, Mick. <laughs> oh, that's that's scary. Jacques, I have to tell you, I have I always loved working with you. You were just an awesome guy. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, it's a shame more people don't share your perspective. Well, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> no, and I accept responsibility for that. You know, um, I know my work is more than good enough, but I'm an eccentric. So my perspective, my expect perspective on the world is... I think what we're going to do is... Um, yeah. We'll talk about the hidden if you're if you're if you're willing, Mr. Haken. Yeah, well, I saw it today, and uh, I must say, <laughs> I was, you know, there were things about it that were wonderful, but there's too much that bugs me about it. Not the film, not the filmmaking. It's strictly a photography issue for me. I struggle with it, and I don't think the print is correct. It's too bright. It's too bright. Uline Cinema has so many horrible prints out there of yeah. their stuff. <laughs> you know, I mean, the although the Nightmare print, on Elm Street that's out there now on video on demand is acceptable. It's 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 decent. It represents what I it? shot. Oh yeah. Oh good. Yeah, it's day and night, day and night to to. We're going to do uh, one a month up until the thirtieth anniversary of four. And that's when I, I've got a book coming out about Nightmare on Elm Street 4. So, Excellent. Excellent. You know, I figure I might as well tell all these stories. I've told I've told them to like the same eight people <laughs> for, for you know, how many years and about, it's about time to get it out. <laughs> yeah, before you forget, right? My kids won't listen to me. <laughs> my, gra- my grandchildren won't listen to me. So. <laughs> Something must be wrong with me. Yes. Then. Yeah. So I'll well, listen to any, any yeah, story. Exactly. All right. And yeah. by the way, I saw the hidden for the first time, and I thought it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, I showed it to my girlfriend, who's not even into that genre or anything like that, and uh, she really got, thought it was a hoot, for real. That's an interesting thing. You know, I thought about that when I was watching it this time. Is that it crosses appeal because you know it, it's a great buddy cop, oh, that yeah. buddy film, yeah. and and it's sci-fi it's, it's humorous <laughs> as hell and i also have to say this for some reason the clothing and the hairstyles do not bother me as bad as a lot of the 80s films do ah, true i i mean i don't think that there was as many right. bufanti oh, no. <laughs> bufanti hairdos as there is well usually. you can't be a tough cop with a bufant hairdo right yeah, that's true. yeah. <laughs> yeah michael murray was like emperor he was the emperor detective i mean that that guy was on fire, wasn't he? He yeah. was a superhero oh, yeah. cop, and he played it. He he inhabited that role, and his whole, you know, this is a guy who just lives in the real world one hundred percent, and he is not to be argued with. You're he's right. got a <laughs> wife and kids. He's got a wife and kids that he <laughs> loves, and he knows <laughs> what's real and what's not real. And especially, there's a great turning point. See, I'm getting into the narrative because to me, I mean, we st- it's fun and everything, but the the strength of that piece is its narrative. Oh, it is. It's it's about all these people finding. It's it's about people that are either finding out who they are or finding out that everything that they know is just a little skewed. Yes. <laughs> I thought it was about capitalism. And oh. the, the communist was arrested at one point. You know, you're a very weird person. <laughs> no, I mean, you was, shouldn't talk well, sometimes. The creature got into some people's bodies and took whatever he wanted. Oh, it was well, all there about, you go. Like, you yeah. know, American greed. That's it, the way I saw it. Well, so you're saying that <laughs> maybe this I'm is reading a, too much into it. Yeah, I think you are. Really, I do. <laughs> no, I think there's there's validity to that because uh, all allegories come from the human experience and the human condition. It's true. Yeah. So there can be resonance for that. Oh, so you, you know what? It never occurred to me is is uh, is we do have the total id out there, don't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I mean you know like going down the road, uh, uh, pumping on the uh, steering wheel, listening oh, yeah. to metal rock in a Ferrari. Yeah, yeah. It's the id all the way out. 
didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And then it was like, I mean, all the cars they were using were cars that were really wanted back then. I don't know if they really are now, but they were yeah, back really, then. <laughs> it's true. No, it's really true. And and I have, uh, you know, after we get done with the review, we're going to talk about Ferraris. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, what I was saying was, getting back to my point of why the film sustains, is you have this personal journey of this main character who, in the beginning is so diametrically opposed to accepting this situation and step by step the narrative takes him even all the way from the music store where he sees him he arrives at a crime scene and here's this guy he just told you're the guy you're searching for is dead and in the hospital so he says no now i'm looking for this guy so he disappears then he goes to a crime scene there's this guy already at the crime scene he pulls him outside says what the hell do you think you're doing here <laughs> yeah, right. you know, and it, you know when you if that's why it's great to see it for the second time to watch Kyle McLaughlin's performance because a lot of times you know people didn't realize that Kyle was part of it you know they right. oh yeah well, he's very, he's also very, uh, he, he plays, his, his whole character is so flat, you know? Right. And even when he tells him things that don't make sense at all, Nuri's just listening, but of course he's not buying it. And so inch by inch, like after they get to the Ferrari dealership, for example, he's already had a bunch of Lloyd telling him things that surprisingly, as screwy as he said when he are first heard true. it <laughs> right. are coming true <laughs> so when true. his boys say they stole a red ferrari immediately lloyd says he took it yeah that's right it. he took it fuck you how do you how the fuck do you know and then mike nori says put an apb on the red ferrari so that's one little clue that you know it's not like he's saying i believe you but you know he has his hunches are starting to change and there's a bunch of little turning points like that that take you all the way up to that rooftop where he watches the conversation between the two of them where the monster's inside claudia christian and says i'm not coming you're not coming out out, right i'm not coming out i know and so he's watching all this and then he's on board but that's you know it's a a, it's a 75 minutes to that point ride but but not for one moment do i do i ever want to look at my watch or, or any of that and by the way whoever the dp was the lighting of the police station was amazing oh yeah i hate it in other words, if I were to do that today, I would do such a different. What, what, what approach. would you? Because really, very dated and and hey, is this going on the record? <laughs> <laughs> it's hey, Jock. This is going on your permanent record. <laughs> <laughs> no, there there are a lot of scenes that are lovely. There are a lot of scenes that are lovely, but they're not as lovely as they could be because they're how they're printed. They're way bright. If the right expression, you know what I mean by printing, the grading, the lightness. Oh, yeah, the grading. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Scenes are lit in such a way where you could actually crush them quite a bit and still see plenty of detail. And there's enough highlights to hold the frame together. And it would be much spookier, moodier and classier, a lot more expression and resonance. But but very flocky look, very cheap look. I, I know that I, I know that that's you know your your point of view and it's and it's good because you wanted the whole thing to be darker and more squashed. But the police station to me was great because I went to about three of them and and I had been in police stations before. And they are so far the other way as far as being bright. You know they're the. Uh, the antithesis of everything that you're thinking of. Uh, they are, you know, usually just, you know, uh, as many uh, of those eight foot fluorescent. Oh yeah, bad uh, lighting panels. <laughs> there, the f- fluorescent <laughs> tubes as you can get. Uh, I, I was. We kind of built that based on photos right off of the uh, Rampart uh, police station, and you dimmed it down a great deal from that. And, and, you know, because you were all Kino flows on the ceiling, right? And Or fixtures. It, I might have used just for budget's sake. 
A lot of them were just because I didn't need to dim them or anything like that. So. Okay, because but uh, I, I I still thought it looked really good. I, it's funny that you said that. You know, looking back on it, you know, things that you don't right. <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I would have used on some of the wide shots. I would have put graduated filters to to shave to mold the shape of the light. There's very flat lighting there. The walls were painted a reasonable color to handle that kind of spill, but. That's all you, right, Mick? We painted the flat. It's too <laughs> flat. It wasn't. It, there needed to be more expression. You know, it was a fun scene in that room when it's a it's a scene. It's done in the daytime, but the lights are then turned down and the sunlight coming into the room when he interrogates Lloyd. Right. Brings him up. Right. In it was very cell. good. It was yeah, very. Good. That was yeah. better. That was better. But I don't but, know. But uh, just it, I, I just have to say that that. It looks so much better than a lot, especially a, a lot of the uh, the uh, low budget, or you know, oh, yeah. uh, better than the cop films that were out. Cop at that time. films of yeah. that period, no, uh, and and the stuff at night. You know, I I remember that you you used an Agfa film, yeah, uh, for the night scenes, uh, working working with that different uh, film latitude so that your blacks didn't quite go completely black. Correct. So so that when you're doing that chase scene. It, you can see a lot of detail around, and um, I, now that's I, very that's the norm. Yeah, that's but, the norm, <laughs> right? Yeah, the, I, I, I remember it was it was the first time that we actually had a truck running in front of that. <laughs> I had hired a truck to run in front of everybody and do wet downs, <laughs> <laughs> and I just <laughs> I remember that. One thing that Jock said was, you know what? If you do one wet down and we start this thing, you're gonna have to wet do down it all everything. Time. You're gonna have to make sets. <laughs> right? Be yeah, consistent. he was right. Yeah. I really hated it after after a while. I didn't even want to do it anymore, and and I was stuck. Yeah. <laughs> well, but it definitely enhances a film like that. So, but the stuff on the roof, uh, amazing. Yeah, yeah that, the, that was location too. That that was just a great location. That you know. But to shoot it on location, have to get lights up to oh to be higher than a six story building back then on low budget movies. It was a big deal having people. Now it's nothing. Right. And and remember I remember that you had me build all those uh uh um what do they call them? Um skylights so that we could get lights in there so that we didn't yeah, have Yeah, that a, was too much. Boy, I talk about insecurity. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, I'm just <laughs> killing myself here. <laughs> Wow, I was. I thought that was uh, th that it, it looked good overall, and, and yeah, no, it and, definitely was too precious. Is my beef? It wasn't edgy enough. Well, you know, you know, it's the age. It was different. It was it, different. It, 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 it was it was a it was a great looking film. That despite despite what you think, right? Dis, despite yourself, despite yourself, you did a great job. Yeah. Well, you guys were young lads. We were. Yeah. <laughs> we were. <laughs> <laughs> and you were just getting started, right? We were young and noxious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're younger than me, Mick, so. Yeah, I am, I am. <laughs> I wasn't yeah. so young. I, I, I should have known better. <laughs> you're about six, I, I yeah, think you, you're about six years older than I am, aren't you? I'm going to be 68, yes. 68, yeah, 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 see? See, he's an old guy. He's, he, yeah, I'll tell you something. <laughs> when I was 62, I could still hand... I was on Captain Phillips for two months on a Navy ship. That's what ship we saw. Hand holding. Uh, yeah. I, I can't even lift a camera. <laughs> 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 I'm still shooting, though. I'm still shooting. Well, you don't need to at this point, right? No, no, no. I love it. It's funny. Um, lately, after my wife passed, I was out of the business for a while. I got into second unit work. And uh, I was DPing and shooting, but, you know, people really liked my long lens work. So now I work for, uh, you know, people bring me on to just do long lens and also remote camera systems. I'm very good on the wheels. Oh, these are you? Guys, yeah. Yeah. These younger guys are not as adept. They, they're good with joysticks, which I am not good at. <laughs> I, don't have, I right. operate a camera with joysticks. <laughs> but... Um, so I'm still working is my point. As well you should be. Mostly I work with my brain. <laughs> I'm working on some of my faves, by the way. Great. Oh, cool. Yeah. So l l let's go back to the hidden. We went through, <laughs> we went through, uh, I thought that the, the gunfight in the, oh, uh, God. the gunfights were great. The gunfight in, in the masquerade, in the, um, 
uh, what, what are the uh, mannequin yes, factory? Yes. <laughs> oh man, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that looked so good. And 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 all through it, the one thing that I really like about it is is how many times Michael Nury hits Claudia with a a bullet, and and you can see it in his face every time it happens. He's thinking. What is going on? Why can I not kill this girl, this <laughs> <Right>. woman? <laughs> and all the time, the mannequins are exploding all over the place. And uh, uh, and, and then oh, we get upstairs, yeah. and and then she she does that fall. It, it is it is really all together very. It has a masterful look. Oh, and she fell through the sign. Oh, that was, that was yeah. beautiful. And, and and you see, they didn't do they didn't fall. They didn't want to fall through the um, through the neon. It wasn't um, recommended anywhere, and so we sewed little bags and put the, and the neon was all in little oh. uh, packets oh, okay. that that we sewed out of window screen, and and what they they were made so that when she went through it, like one would go one one would break and go oh, one way, okay. and the other would break and go in the other. So none of it went down with her. Right. So it all stayed up in the air. And I remember coming around the corner after she. <laughs> After she went down in the bag, uh, the stunt person and, and 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 lands in the bag, and and I'm I'm sniffing around there, and they're looking for any glass that went with her. Going, yeah, yeah, hooray! <laughs> <laughs> Nothing came down. Yeah, you bet. That's a big deal. I mean, physical effects and stunts. You know, that's a big responsibility when you do a gag like oh, that. Oh yeah, it was it it was. So. Uh, Kudos to you for keeping them yeah. safe and getting us a great shot, because that's what it's all about: is doing it safe. And, and I might add that my mother, my mother, actually won the pool. That was the only night that she ever came out to see something filmed that we had done. And she drove out from San Bernardino, and uh, she watched us uh, film that night, and she won the pool. For when we were gonna, for when we were gonna break the neon, <laughs> <laughs> and she, I think I she won fifty-seven dollars that. that night. Nice, <laughs> nice. So, it, it go, uh, Claudia Christian. Yeah, that was a tough uh, night for me to shoot oh, on location and get all shit uh, done. That went oh, a long man. time. And we had, remember, we had that set piece. We remember him hanging right? from the thing with the cops coming. A beautiful rakish shot was your that set. That was beautiful, piece. though. And I'm right on the yeah. I was right on the frame. I used every scrap of set you gave well, me. Well, and 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 I might add that you know the that rooftop. <laughs> I remember. Do you remember we had to move that thing twice? That we had it up there on the rooftop, and we were trying to do all this in one night. And we did. We managed to get through that thing all the way up to the fall in a night. Wow. You know, yeah. and. Uh, <laughs> And that set piece kept being in the way, no matter where we would put it. I'm you, no. We're moving it all over the place up there. And I was like, this is getting really old. <laughs> Cause it was enormous. Oh, no, yeah. Bet. That's terrible. I, you know, I know it's 30 years later, 31 years later, but no. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, you have nothing to apologize for. You know what? I, I figured this way. If we both get out of these things with um, our psyches intact, we're doing pretty damn good. You know? Yeah. It, the, we, we, were, we were superheroes because when you look at the budgets of these films oh, yeah. and you see what's on the screen, today, that's the lunch budget. <laughs> Of a median size yeah, film, yeah. you know, but but then it's all at the same time, you know the uh, the effects budgets are, uh, you know, you can do a lot with almost nothing now, and you don't have to develop your film anymore and all the rest of that. So so we have these amazing young Turks coming up with uh, just some amazing other films. Like um, I don't know if you've seen a film. Um, what's the one with the cardboard? Dave makes a maze. Oh yeah, just yeah. amazing. Just, yeah, just absolutely great. amazing thing to see. Definitely low budget too. Yeah, definitely low budget. You know, so so there are other young Turks that are following in our footsteps, uh, even if they don't know it. It's called Dave makes a maze. Yes, it's amazing. It, it's a, it's an amazing <laughs> film. You have to see. I think it's on Hulu. I think Hulu. Yeah, it's on Hulu. If you get a chance, you have to check it out. It it is a 
It's only on Hulu? Yeah, only on Hulu. It is a to- little tour de force. But, uh, but so I-, I always loved Claudia Christensen in that role. I mean, you know, to me, she really did such a great job as the zoned yeah. out stripper. Oh, was it great performance? I thought that was better than Strays. <laughs> you know how they were, you know how that, <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Thank you for <laughs> mentioning that. <laughs> Do you know how those the, the the actors that played the monster that played the antagonist they rehearsed as a group? Did they? Oh wow! Always is that why they always had to? Yeah, because they did all get the exact same expression. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the second guy was amazing though. I love that guy. Yeah, the the guy. That, oh, he that, was great. It was uh, like my dad gone crazy. That's what <laughs> I was like. That, this, this he's that's awesome. Right, exactly. Yeah, Mr. Miller. I think. Yeah. Now, so they all they all went together and they carved out that you know they found the truth of that because at any given moment when you point your camera at that character he's standing around and looking at it and if we're going to identify with him it's got to be like he landed on you know <laughs> right Mars. exactly you know there there's there's a couple of times where you keep finding you, you know the the obsession uh through there of these characters with a mirror Huh. Was uh, was amazing yeah. and really an interesting theme that ran through it. Right. Uh, all of them looking in, and it's all about what yeah, is what human. is human and and, and and the shots in the mirror. Uh, How about the dog? The dog is <laughs> great. The, the, mirror. Dog. <laughs> the dog is great. <laughs> okay, so so just out of curiosity, because I I need to tell a couple <laughs> stories. I had to tell a story about that dog. <laughs> that that probably was not my department's finest moment, oh. but in the meantime, we do always rate these uh, films on um, a five something scale, mm-hmm. and I am going to rate the hidden at uh, uh, a four point two zoned out strippers. I would give it a four point five, even oh. higher. Yes. Whoa. Yeah. Really. Because well, the only I had one question. Okay. When the guy has a flamethrower and he's attacking this senator with the flamethrower, right? Why would the cops just stand there and watch him? That was that was one question I had. <laughs> I mean, they would keep shooting, wouldn't they? Well, yeah, that's that's a good point. <laughs> but you know, so I might give it a couple points off for that. So I'm I'm around four point five. You know, so I Jock? I'm not gonna defend that one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I agree with it entirely. Um, that probably could have been improved with. Edited. So, right. so yeah. uh, Jacques, you, between one and five, what do you think? That's a tough one. It's a good thing my girlfriend was watching with me because <laughs> she she was very concerned. She didn't want to be scared and grossed <laughs> out in anything. And it just, the movie tickled the hell oh, out great. of Oh, great. Great. Yeah, she just loved it and thought it was funny and a hoot and, a, and all that. So I don't want to be too hard on it yeah no i i, I go, i'll go with 4.2 4. 4. that's 2. that's i okay. can live with that's a good, good one i don't know about 4.5 <laughs> <though. laughs> well i just really enjoyed it i guess i was well, first time i'd seen it too so i, I was well, all yeah. in yeah <laughs> so you guys come from a different point of view we'll yeah you worked on point it. of view <laughs> so, so it's i'm gonna tell a story about this you're looking in the mirror you guys are both looking I, in the mirror <laughs> <laughs> is that what i'm doing <laughs> that's right <laughs> well uh uh so the dog, when we were on the location, we were shooting the dog that we couldn't get the dog to do what we wanted, right? Yeah. And so we went back later on to the same location because the dog had been trained at that location forever. I mean, you know, the thing is, is if you see a little a little gag like the dog coming through the yeah, um, through slats, the yeah. that took a lot of training. Trust me. I mean, that's a big deal. It's a huge deal. It really is. It takes a long time. And uh, so <laughs> we go back to the location. We set cameras up for a, a, a kind of a other unit, right? Not yeah. second unit, but I mean, this is after the film was done. And um, we sat there with the dog on a board. You know, the door, <laughs> we, we had made this little platform for the dog to do a little run up and everything like that. And we have all these fake, uh, you know, doors set up. And um, so we, we sit there and we sit there 
and we sit there and we hear the clicking of the things, same things that oh, were on gosh, sprays, the really? little, uh, yeah, those little <laughs> click, click, click things, which I really hate. And they're whistling at the dog and they're trying, and they do this for four hours. I mean, the thing is, is I was about ready to jump through it because they were, they were getting to the point of where they had trained me that, you know, if, if I jumped through that thing, <laughs> maybe these guys had shut up and my life right. would get better. You know I mean? Come on, really. At some point, that's what it all becomes, right? Right. And Dave Cannon is sitting across from me and he goes like this. He goes, he goes, look, look over there. And I turn around, I look back and the dog's through the door. <laughs> And, all, and everybody's going, yay, yay, it's amazing. We got it. The dog went through the door. And I'm looking back at him. You son of a bitch. You threw the dog through the door. And he goes, yeah, I know. Can we go home now? Yeah, wow. <laughs> he did. He threw the dog through the door. Well, it works. <laughs> Cats. Yeah. Ask. No, no, no. It, it was a yeah. breakaway. There was probably emotional uh, duress. Yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah, it you know, the, th- the, <laughs> the things the cats did to us. He shouldn't have become a show dog. It really? <laughs> <laughs> that's what you get for, for being a, a dog in show business, right? Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, ask Jacques about cats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That must have been fun. <laughs> what? What has two legs and sleeps with cats? <laughs> what? Mrs. Cats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. But a boo. <laughs> there you go. Um, just to touch on some of the other wonderful work that you've um, done, let's let, we'll cover it with me. You and I work with 30 cats. Um, on straight. Wait a minute. Are you, are you kidding me? <laughs> he... You were on Breaking Two Electric Boogaloo. Yeah, no, I did some split to work for them. That's all. Really? So did I. Huh? That's scary. I was a construction coordinator. That's how I met Mark. Uh, what was his name? The director. Not Fisher. The. Uh, no. So, so he worked with me on Cats. Right. He worked with me, evidently, um, on... Breaking uh, 2. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Which, by the way, was that same room used in Elm Street 1? The one that rotates? Oh, of course. I was curious about that. Of course. Oh, that's that's right. where you worked. That's probably where we first met each other, was the revolving room. Oh, that's right. The, the room, the room. Yes, because the, the room was room. then used for breaking... It came directly from... Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street yeah. and was turned around and used for electric boogaloo. That was a clever gag. That was. Uh, you know, that uh, thing was hand driven. Yeah, no, I know. Absolutely. It was what that well balanced. Wow. I mean, it took that them a while to balance it, but boy, when they did, it was when a, they did. It was a clever deal, though. I mean, it had yeah. huge mass and, and entropy. But it was balanced so that if you pushed on it, it would move. <laughs> yeah, it was. Did and you like and bearings? <laughs> yes, bearings and, and weighted and all kinds of things. You would know better. Yeah, the, somebody had said, had actually. Jim Doyle. To, to give you, Jim Doyle, to give you an idea of how, uh, how a huge piece of mass could be moved that easily, is it, it was balanced and balanced and balanced, and somebody had left. A piece of L metal uh, attached uh, hadn't cut it off when they weld, welded and, and and were finishing the room on the inside and supporting it. And they did a test of the room, and the L metal bracket went up and hit the grid. And I am telling you, the sound of that hitting the grid <laughs> was because so the thing much is, mass. even though so much. You know, it was so <laughs> much mass behind that piece, you know, it it shuddered to a stop, and that grid just it moaned. <laughs> I thought I literally thought the world was coming down it's on like my head. It's like a ship. Head. It's like a yeah, ship. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's like pushing a ship on the water, man. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, you know, this wacky stuff. You know, that's what I was thinking about. All the back then we did very, you know, we did a lot of in camera work for Right. Oh, yeah. Effects. Yeah, we did. Well, the thing the thing is is there was a there was a process of you would do as much in work as you possibly could because because the opticals were expensive. Right. Yeah. So you would spend a lot of effort. And they were limited. Doing, 
they were limited. They, yeah, and, yeah, and you but were they limited didn't look to what good, you would do. They didn't look right. They were dopey and everything. Exactly. So what you would do is you would you would spend a great deal of, of time and money figuring your shots in a line so that you could do them practically. And um, yeah, it's it that's that's what's hmm. that's what's different nowadays is that it is easier in every possible way to uh, you know just do the optical shots and it doesn't quite take as much kind of processing and thought. Right. I mean, unless you get into the really complicated ones, but, uh, but the thing is you're using those shots all the way along mm. and, and they don't kind of have as real a feel, which kind of gives you that, you know, what I've talked yeah. to before about the Frank, Frank Miller actually does a lot of real stuff yeah. and then brings it together with the CGI and it really has. Oh, a, I think, see, that's what my argument with the older films that hold up longer because I think that people are kind of getting worn out with all this no, CGI. You see, that's, that's just because we were better people. <laughs> Astro, you worked harder, right? Astro, you were harder workers. No, we were better people. I mean, better people overall. <laughs> I mean, doesn't, isn't that what it comes down to? It does. Well, that's what I think. <laughs> Jock's a better person by far <laughs> <laughs> than any thirty-year-old. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You pieces of. <laughs> so, what is it like working around a lot of twenty and thirty-year-olds? I love it. I'm finally, I'm finally uh, fitting in. <laughs> oh, are you? You, you, get, you get in there, huh? <laughs> yeah, no, do I they definitely do... have always been? You, you know, now that I'm in my late sixties. I'm enjoying the benefit of the ancillary benefit of my immaturity. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The rest of the story. <laughs> yeah, people think it's cute, whereas before they thought I was nuts. But I've always oh, been yeah. in touch with my inner child, for sure. <laughs> Oh, Jock, there, there's one thing that I wanted to make sure and do during this interview is I wanted to apologize for throwing you in the pool. Did um, you? Did you throw me in the pool? I did. I threw you in the pool uh, at the brat party for, um, what's the one that and we I were didn't, up in Santa And I Cruz? didn't take it well? You didn't take it well. You didn't, you didn't. You know something? You took it... I'm going to apologize to you because I was no, being a no. jerk for, for not going along with it. <laughs> you you actually I've uh, changed you, you practically then. scared me. I I thought I thought well here it is this is the rap party and everything and, and well I, you know I what thought, yeah you know th the thing is I you know I've I've had some psychological issues that I still have but I've learned to embrace them and see them as a gift now. So uh, back at that time I was very overly shy and not. You know, and, 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 you know, I needed sort of an organized world. Now I've learned to embrace my perspective on things. To me, oh. I look at the world as I live in a world of normals, their way of doing things, even though I don't agree with it. <laughs> right. It's the way things are. And the sooner I learn to co conform and cooperate and appear to be normal, the there you go. Easier it's going to go in my life. <laughs> and since huh. I've since I've done that, I've really learned to love the normals. They're yes, my they're my favorite people. <laughs> do you, do you, <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't exactly ever call myself normal. Yeah, no, you're um, not. Yeah, you're right. That's true. I, I was you're I not. was just a pe I was a piece of chaos that just kind of like <laughs> formed its own uh, fractal logic <laughs> and went down the road. <laughs> Yeah, well, all kidding aside, I think a lot of it has to do with being, you know, always solution oriented, which you were. Man. Right. Yeah. In other words, right. yeah, things were crazy and hairy, but and I sometimes took the world too seriously. But one thing I didn't do was, you know, not embrace, you know pursuing a solution that the higher purpose was always oh yeah we to, always worked it out to do our jobs and and you know the mission was always the higher purpose and any personal issues that i had no matter what weirdness you know my <laughs> personality was putting off i would always oh we that. got along famously I, yeah. I remember when you 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 had you used to drive an old ford yeah 
Oh, a galaxy. It was in the film. It was in the film, in the fucking scene, that baby blue with the white convertible that was parked next to the... That was his car. (laughs) His car was his car was a thing of beauty. Oh my and god! I, ha- I had a Mercedes at the time, and then later on, I had a '54, uh, 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 sort of like a station wagon, kind of big beast. And and I drove up, and I re- I remember this distinctly. He drove up in a Lexus, right? <laughs> yeah. and, and I got out of the car, and I was like, Jacques. What the, Where's the, the Ford? hell is wrong with you, man? Where's your Where's your Ford? You know, I, I felt I felt betrayed. I felt like like uh, all, like all of life was going to have to change because Jacques Aitken <laughs> was was driving a Lexus, and he goes he goes Mick, it's like it's like a Cadillac, except for it's really well made and it's inexpensive and it's really cool. <laughs> And um, and I remember, and I and I said at the time, I said distinctly, but it's a Japanese car. <laughs> <laughs> wow, things changed. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, it's funny. I lo- I followed the development of the Lexus through the late eighties, and it was released. Its first year was nineteen ninety, and I was there to buy <laughs> the first like, wow, that's runs rolling off the assembly line because I. <laughs> I said now because I loved cars, and to me, what what the Japanese and particularly what Lexus was doing, they were the first high end brand, and Toyota had the money and the mm-hmm. technological. That was a very cool car for yeah, me was. at that time. It was. Wow, but what a switch! <laughs> I know what exactly. Switch. What a betrayal! What a betrayal! Yeah, <laughs> what a betrayal! Yeah, I was, I, I was like, I was mortified. I was like, oh, I don't, my gosh, you know. I don't play me. Well, oh, Dad, you got geez. to see a new side of me. I, I realize now, my whole life, I was actually born way too early. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> way too early. I mean, all the stuff that's coming, I just, I'm tapping my foot with AI. Uh, you know, it's just not soon enough. There's no flying cars. We're just, we didn't even uh, get to the moon. Yeah. Nothing's <laughs> happening here. You wanted, Very you disappointed. Wanted be, you wanted to be coming of age, of age to start your DP work about now, right? Yeah, well, I think in 2001. Oh, yeah, there you be go. Up in space and space station. Yeah. Right. But okay, oh, yeah. 2010. Yeah. Here we are, 2019 <laughs> from Blade Runner. And look oh. at us. The only thing we have are these cell phones are pretty impressive. Yeah, no, that's true. But but yeah. hey, but we have Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, oh, well. Sorry about that. Oh well. Anyway, uh <laughs> moving on. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> well, hey, Jacques, I don't want to keep you any longer. Um Well, I do want him to talk about like some things that are currently going on with him. Well, there you yeah, go. I gotta that's know. what I was just I gonna know. say. Let's hear Because I just got done watching Black Panther and, and the Korea stuff was amazing. Yeah, I was on Black Panther, yeah. 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 Talk to us about what you're doing now. Uh, well, that wasn't my last. I was on Venom. Do you know what Venom is? Oh, Venom. A- okay. Oh. I've heard of that. I- yeah, that's a Sony Marvel with uh, Tom Hardy. It's a spinoff. It's a spinoff of Spider-Man. Venom and Carnage. Yeah, if you know the comic books. Um, did they try and do that a long time ago? Uh, I don't know whether they did it as a movie. This is a you know a whole big you know Megilla movie. So. Yeah, um, hmm. but I also was on the career unit. I was camera operator on that. I wasn't the DP oh. of that that action unit. Camera operator. I did some splinter work on that. That's why the unit that picks me up uh, every now and then to operate. I mean, I do DP, but it's nice to get picked up to operate because it's very easy job. None of the pressure. Yes. Of course, the money is much less too. But uh, but that was fun to go to Korea. It was cold working at night, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, but, well know. great. So you're working on Venom, and you got anything anything else coming up? No, I don't really. I'm trying to start a new career as a. What is your new career? A screenwriter and producer. Oh my gosh! I figure I'm trying to make it by the time I'm 72. I know that's tough, but there you go. I don't have much more time. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, <laughs> well, if you if you uh, need somebody to uh, get out there and uh, uh, give you any advertising at all, uh, we will be there for you. Oh, okay. Absolutely, yeah. And you know what? Uh, I would I would love it if uh, maybe uh, 
we could do this again, maybe in six months or so, if you're if you're willing. Yeah, sure. I'm, I just to you know, we'll talk film, about some filmmaking other stuff. is my passion. Do you realize I'm coming up? I started. I shot my first film when I was in college for money, because I, I had bought a Bolex in high school. So I was shooting '68. Oh, <laughs> I was doing Ooh, industrials. Oh my god! So this year is my 50th anniversary Ooh. as a professional wow. cinematographer. And I still oh haven't God. lost my youthful passion for storytelling and shooting. And so, yeah, I'm always up for talking about it and getting involved in it. You know, I still have that fire in the belly to do it. And and the writing part is still fun. I mean, you know, I realize after all this time uh, the, and the reason why I don't, don't do many commercials at all is narrative is really my interest i like being a photographer a director of photography to portray stories and characters because it's almost like three-dimensional chess it's very different than just photography looking at a narrative in a script and staging events and then creating a long through lines you know following story through lines and using motifs and all this stuff it's such a complex canvas it's incredible it's a very beautiful place to work it's very stimulating for the mind the creative the intuition what a gift to be able to work as a filmmaker what a great art oh to, that's that. we were we were gifted with this really we're so <laughs> lucky to do this kind of work uh, I will totally agree with you, and I and and uh, and I want to say that you know it's been a pleasure working with you and talking to you again, and we're going to make it happen again. Yeah, that's fine. We, I'm, you know, we can watch another movie and comment. Oh on this, yeah, comment. <laughs> yes. I'm very opinionated. <laughs> Although, oh, I'm less, really, I'm less really, I'm less you're, Chris you're opinionated. <laughs> I, I'll tell you, I'm I'm much softer in my old age, but not towards my own work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, no, I think it's great that you're willing to do that with your own work, especially. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, no, no. Well, this, I call a spade it, a spade. It, you know, look, I was it, worried about Nightmare on Elm Street, and uh, I was involved in one of the remasterings that I thought was a decent remaster. This remaster doesn't quite look like the one. It's very similar, but this looks like they went and got better te technology than the HD master I worked on, which was had to be at the maybe 20 maybe less and maybe 15 years after so um i'm glad I, that transfer was great the hidden disappointed i i don't think the oh, the expression but, was not what i would have intended you got scenes where there needs to be much more mood and it's lit well enough if it would just be printed properly it would look so much cooler and not dark Mick, you know the irritating dark i know what you're yeah, talking about yeah. plus in video you can lift shadows so you'd see plenty but the tone of it would be different you know what i, I will try looking at it with some sunglasses on there you go <laughs> <laughs> but some of the scenes are printed correctly so you'll have to take them on and off well i'll take them off of those scenes naturally <laughs> you Come know on. what you're making fun of me you're making i am making fun of you but you know what you can take it. Yeah. You, you are you are a great guy. You are really I'm uh, gullible, so but yeah, no, I'm certainly a lot better guy than when you threw me in the water. But I wanted to make <laughs> sure that I apologized for you. I'm glad you remember. Oh, I mean, it's not a big event in my life, but now that you mention it, I think back and I go, "What a prude! What a what a <laughs> what a jerk!" I uh, thought I I I was actually afraid for you getting out of the water. <laughs> I was afraid that something was going to happen. <laughs> I but think listen, I was, my friend, I, I was shocked by it. I think so. I feel so that. great talking to you, and uh, it's going to happen again. Okay, yes, thank you very much. All right, guys, have a great, okay, buddy. great time in the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man, talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us on the Dream Warrior Review. This is Kurt Thomas along with Mick Strong. We appreciate you listening to us. And please let your friends and family know about how awesome we are. You can hit us up at dreamwarriorreview at gmail.com or you can find us on Twitter and Facebook at EW Review. We'll see you next time.
on the Dream Warrior Review. Yeah.